for diluting uh, the respect for the medical service and the detail with respect to the medical service. Oh, I, I, mean, could, I couldn't uh, disagree with you more. I mean, the fact is that the issue here is not delivery of medical service. The issue here is not delivery of medical service. The issue here is not delivery of medical service. For diluting uh, the respect for, 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 for the medical service and the detail with respect to the medical service. Oh, I, I, mean, could, I couldn't uh, disagree with you more. The issue here is not delivery of medical service. I am Dr. Lynn Richardson, and I am a board-certified emergency physician that is a specialist in emergency medicine. I'm assistant professor <laughs> of emergency medicine at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine and director of the emergency medicine residency training program at that institution. I have had, over the course of the last decade, significant involvement in the pre-hospital emergency care system in New York. I'm the former chairperson of the New York City Regional Emergency Medical Services Council, also known as REMSCO, or Regional Council, and I have been a member of the New York City Regional Emergency Medical Advisory Committee since it was established. I have chaired their medical control subcommittee for several years. I've also been a member of the New York State Emergency Medical Services Council, and while I was a member of that body, I chaired both their legislative committee and their medical standards <laughs> committee. I'm one of the principal authors of the New York City Basic and Advanced Life Support Protocols for pre-hospital emergency care, which are currently in use in this city. I've lectured to paramedics at the New York City Emergency Medical Services Division of Training, and for many years before coming to Mount Sinai, I was the chief of the Adult Emergency Service at Harlem Hospital Center, and I gave continuing medical education to paramedics and EMTs at EMS Base Station 18 at Harlem Hospital Center. We However, despite, dis despite all of these uh, qualifications, however, I am here today as a concerned, if unusually well-informed citizen and taxpayer, and here as an advocate for all of those who live, work, and visit New York City, and therefore depend upon the quality of the services provided by New York City EMS. My name is Dr. Marshall Isaacs and I'm Assistant Clinical Professor of Surgery at the University of California in San Francisco. I'm also a board certified emergency physician and I currently am the medical director for the San Francisco Department of Public Health Paramedic Division as well as a separate organization in San Francisco, the San Francisco Fire Department. I am Carlos Rivera, the former commissioner of the New York City Fire Department and I appreciate your taking the time to listen to my remarks today. For those of you who don't know, prior to becoming fire commissioner under the administration of David Dinkins, I served in the fire department for 32 years. Working up from firefighter, I served in various parts of the Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and as a firefighter, lieutenant, captain, battalion chief, deputy chief, and ultimately, an executive staff chief, serving as chief of support service, chief of operations, chief of department, and ultimately, fire commissioner. You remember that well. I do also. <laughs> I worked in the Bronx during the days when the Bronx was burning. I worked in Brooklyn during the riots. I have held every rank that the fire department has to offer. It is in my capacity as a former firefighter and fire chief that I come to you before you today. I come before you because I can no longer sit silent while inexperienced managers with no fire service background lead the world's largest and busiest fire department down a very dangerous path. The entry of the New York City Fire Department into the emergency medical arena poses a serious threat to the safety of the city's firefighters and to the public as a whole. While no one can argue that response time to life-threatening medical emergencies should be a high, high priority of the city administration, it appears to me that the EMS union is correct in its assessment. That is not just a question of response time, but also a question of who is doing the responding. In the fire service with 11,300 employees, we have 377 uniformed employees who are not providing fire services. Right. In EMS with 3,300 employees, oh, so they have 466 EMTs and paramedics who are not providing medical services. Right. You're, you, what you're trying to suggest, you have a, a leaner, meaner 
We're a fishing outfit. New York City EMS is pretty mean and lean already. And so the idea that there's a lot of fluff that somehow the fire department will be able to uh, winnow out of the system because of its you know, superior administrative expertise, I, I really find very unconvincing. I'm a little concerned because there are some very specialized positions in communication uh, and the quality management office and so on, which really require EMTs and paramedics to perform them and cannot be done adequately by uh, what, from the EMS point of view, are civilians or firefighters. We all remember the Fulton Fish Market fire. It's a very large fire. Uh, there were over 20 ambulances, I believe 26 ambulances, that responded to the Fulton Fish Market fire. The fire commissioner sat here and he said he counted 26 ambulances underneath the FDR drive during the Fulton, the Fulton Fish Market fire. Well, there happens to be an EMS station underneath the FDR drive next to the Fulton Fish Market, and there were 26 ambulances parked there off duty. Uh, in the fire department, we don't let fire trucks freelance, and, and in this merger, ambulances would not freelance. Uh, part of the problem is by sitting on street corners, ambulances are fairly free to go where they believe they're needed. Uh, and although it's all done for the best of intentions, it's not always the right response. I find that the, in, the initial concept of going from the current system or a patrol-based system as far as providing EMS care throughout the city and going back to stationary uh, stations is stepping back 15 to 20 years. Um, this has been identified by a variety of different agencies, including the Fitch organization, Rick Keller, who does a, a lot of uh, ambulance modeling and response. Uh, and basically, he said that it, it, it doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is, and I will quote him, this differs from fire suppression primarily to a much greater incident with significantly fewer resources. Despite the provider, EMS typically results in three to five times as many dispatches as fire incidents. I think in New York City you'll find that's uh, probably closer to five times busier. Uh, this large volume of medical assignments must be handled with fewer ambulances, stations, and personnel. What I am worried about is um, how it, the decisions that they will make, the choices that they will make, that then will be in the hands of people whose expertise is so limited that they even think they can do this. This, this is what concerns me. And again, I would feel better if they weren't proposing such an unrealistic uh, increase in efficiency. Because it only says to me uh, that, you know, that they're novices at this and they're making promises they're not going to be able to keep. The response time of EMS uh, to many, many emergencies is not very good. Uh, and part of this is because they are out there freelancing and uh, wandering around like ships in the night on street corners. Response times that are routinely used to determine fire department responses are not applicable to EMS. Various response models evolved to allow EMS to pr respond in safe, timely manner to life-threatening problems. Clustering three or four ambulances in garages is impractical and may in fact increase travel time. It has been said that New York City is the only city where calls wait for ambulances rather than the opposite. There are lots of issues in, in measuring the quality of care. This is true, not just in EMS, but throughout medicine. And my fear is that when you can't, when something's hard to measure, then you ignore it. And you look at what can be measured. And so numbers can be measured. Response time can be measured. Uh, whether or not they actually take good care of the patients at the scene is much more difficult to measure. And so there may be uh, inadvertently simply a push, especially if they commit to a certain level of response time, to just get to the scene, scoop the patients up, get them to the hospital, and get back in service without taking the time to provide the care that the EMTs and paramedics have been trained to give at the scene. And that's my fear, especially if they commit to achieving certain numbers, that they will push for those numbers at the expense of the quality of care. EMS is not basically a transportation service. As a seasoned fire chief who spent many years on the planning side of the New York City Fire Service, I can unequivocally state that the response time will increase and increase in response time will translate into increased property damage and fatalities. Commissioner, I, I think the most important issue that I think we ought to deal with uh, has to do with whether or not we should undertake this. In other words, will the citizens of New York City be better served 
by having ES, uh, EMS merged into the fire department. Even if we assume now that the information that you've supplied us about EMS and how they could effectively serve better, how they can improve, if we adopted it, why then couldn't we use this as an oversight document on EMS rather than a merger document for the fire department and upgrade EMS and make it more efficient to serve the people without having it absorbed in the fire department? The answer is that you can upgrade any agency, uh, assuming unlimited dollars and personnel, uh, to do anything. Right. Uh, in this case, the most cost-effective and the most efficient and integrated way to coordinate both the fire department medical response and the EMS medical response and more than double the number of responders for $10 million as opposed to what would be required to double the ambulance corps for a cost of at a minimum another $170 million uh, is the issue. Uh, in the best of all worlds, uh, you could, you know, you could, you can pump in people and dollars and equipment into any agency. But we believe that this is the most cost-effective way to get a coordinated, more rapid, better response to the citizens of New York. Even now, I am informed that there are many times that the fire department availability in the borough of Brooklyn is diminished because of large number of engine companies are wastefully tied up at emergency medical calls. What I am worried about is um, how it, the decisions that they will make, the choices that they will make, that then will be in the hands of people whose expertise is so limited that they even think they can do this. This, this is what concerns me. And again, I would feel better if they weren't proposing such an unrealistic uh, increase in efficiency. Because it only says to me uh, that, you know, that they're novices at this and they're making promises they're not going to be able to keep. By placing EMS in the fire service, all too often the medical mission becomes secondary to the overall disaster management component that they have done so well over the decades. Your system is working. Why change it? I would also like to stress that I do not believe it would be at all advisable or cost efficient to contemplate even replacing the experienced EMS EMTs with newly trained firefighters EMTs who will enter the emergency scene with exactly zero days of clinical experience in treating critically ill or injured patients. This simply does not make good medical sense. I want to emphasize because I heard some of the uh, experts talking to this point that we can all agree that EMS needs help. Its budget has been slashed Independent of that, it is in need of major operational improvements that would translate into better pre-hospital emergency care, including better response time. There are a number of thoughtful ways that EMS operations can be improved, which I will touch on, but I want to make it clear that the proposal that you are considering is not the way. This is my professional opinion that there will be deaths. I would compare the two different budgets and the fact that covering the same area in the city of New York the New York City EMS does it with 3,500 people versus 11,000, and a budget of $750 million versus $108 million. And they do it, they're seven times busier with four times less staff. I would submit if you're going to merge anybody, emerge the busier service and put the least busy service underneath. Because what... Dr. Isaacs, you testified about other cities and that, that have merged the two, the two entities. Uh, um, in, those, in those entities where, where it's working well, in those cities where the merger is working well, what is the positioning of the administrator, the fire commissioner or the fire safety director? Well, actually, Council Member, I'm not um, aware of any systems in which it's working well in which there's been a merger. Um, You're saying that the, there are all failures? The, there are failures, absolutely. You're saying there's there are all failures? No, no, I'm not saying they're all failures. I'm saying the ones that, that tend to work well where they're a fire-based EMS system are ones that have grown up that way, where it is inherent in the culture for many years that part of the role in a, when you join the fire service in that community is that your role will be also as an EMS provider. So people go into that role or knowing that they're going to be involved in the provision so, of medical care. So what you're saying is that in those cities where they've merged the two departments that it, it's not working well. I'm not aware of any systems in which there's been a merger. San Francisco is considering it see. right now, but the way in which they're doing it is something that I hope this council would consider. Uh, the problems that, that you've identified with the, with the EMS system in New York City, they didn't arise in the last three months or six months or a year even. 
I, I'm unclear as to what the political pressures are to get it solved today or next week or next month through this approach. And I really would have strongly argue against a wait and uh, let's do it and a wait and see attitude. We're not talking about parking and, and traffic control here. Uh, where we can say, okay, well that didn't work out real well and we, we got gridlock in an area of the city for a while. We're talking about people's lives here. And you're the committee that's charged with ensuring public safety. If there's no accountability in the current fire department plan, then I can assure you that the public within New York City, if this does not work, is going to be looking to you for answers as to why you didn't consider all the options. The issue here is not delivery of medical service. The issue here is not delivery of medical service. The issue here is not delivery of medical service. The issue here is not delivery of medical service.